الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الإمام أحمد he mentions in his kitab Usul al-Sunna وَمَنْ تَرَكَ الصَّلَاةَ Anyone who leaves the prayer فَقَدْ كَفَارَ He's a disbeliever The salah, as we mentioned, is an action of iman. Because Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِيمَانَكُمْ here means أي صلاتكم. So Allah referred to the salah as iman. Are we all together? Because the ayah, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ It came down on, it came down on regarding قَبْلَ تَحَوُّلُ الْقِبْلَةِ before the Qibla was changed direction. So Allah is saying, it, Allah is not one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will forsake your Iman, meaning your Salah. So the Salah is Iman. So some scholars, they took that to mean, if there is no Salah, there is no, there's no Iman. They are one and the other. And there's evidence for that. Hadith Jabir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, بَيْنَ الرَّجُلِ وَبَيْنَ الشِّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ Muslim narrated in Sahih. Between a person's belief and the person's kufr and disbelief is leaving the prayer. The scholars, they now differed. The issue here is تَرْكُ الصَّلَاةِ What does it mean? Two قول, two opinions. Some people they said it means tarku salati juhudan that if the person leaves the salah out of stubbornness. I left the salah, but he left it out of stubbornness, juhud. Juhud. Jahida li wujubiha. He rejects the salah being obligatory. He says it's not obligatory. Some scholars they said this is what's referred to here is in the hadith. Are we all together? Both parties agree that if he leaves it out of stubbornness, he's a disbeliever. They both agree. Like in the second view, is not agreed upon. It's the difference of opinion, which is if he leaves it tahawunan, takasulan, if he leaves it out of laziness. He believes that salah is wajib. He believes he has to pray, but he leaves it out of laziness. What is his ruling? Is he, does he become a disbeliever or does he not? This is a difference of, of opinion. Whatever ruling, I mean, whatever view that you take, the salah is a very important act. The salah is a very important act, a serious pillar in our religion that a person needs to come with. Then the author, rahimahullah, mentions that anyone who leaves this prayer, it is permissible for the qadi, the judge, not individuals, but the judge, the qadi, the supreme court, to bring him to the court and to tell him to pray. And if he doesn't pray, the supreme court has every right to what? Execute him. Shaykh Imam Ahmed mentions it. Man kafirun wa Allahu qatlah. Again, both parties agree that he should be executed. But on what grounds is he being executed? One group are saying he's been executed out of apostasy. He left the fold of the religion. And another group of scholars are saying, no, it's not out of apostasy, it is what? It's a had, it's a capital punishment. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said something very powerful. He said, and Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah was of the opinion that if you leave the salah, you're not a kafir. Ibn Taymiyyah. But ibn Taymiyyah said, if he's brought to the judge, and the judge go, tells him, go and pray. And then he says, I'm not going to pray. After being told, pray. And he's told, if you don't pray by tomorrow, this time, you will be executed. And then he doesn't pray. Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah said, he's a disbeliever. How else could he become that stubborn? After he knows he's going to be executed. And still say, I'm not going to pray. Are we all together? That's the call of Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So it's a very serious issue. Question, I mentioned to you in the books of Aqeedah, everything that's brought is a consensus. 
Is the issue of abandoning the prayer consensus that is kufr akbar? I just mentioned to you the difference of opinion. So how do we reconcile that with the previous statement I said? Who even thought about that question? So naam is true, but this issue I said in the books of Aqidah, the whatever they state here are issues of consensus, no difference of opinion, ijma. Because Imam Ahmad, what did he say at the beginning? Usulu sunnatu indana. The foundation of our Aqidah is. So if you don't believe the salah is leaving the salah is kufr akbar, does that mean you're not min ahlu sunnah? Uh, yeah. Okay, but why did he say Faqad kafara? He's a disbelief. He didn't mention the other opinion. According to Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, he believes that this issue is a consensus. There's no difference of opinion because of the early generation. Abdullah ibn Shaqiq transmitted a consensus. Are we all together, brothers? Abdullah ibn Shaqiq was a tabi'i. He was a what? Tabi'i. Who did he meet? He met the companions. He said, Kana sahabatu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions of the messenger كانوا لا يرون شيئا and they never saw anything من الأعمال from the actions تركوا كفر leaving it to be disbelief other than the prayer what did he say كان الصحابة the companions so it was as though the entire companions من غير استثناء without any exception they all held the opinion that leaving the prayer it's a what it's disbelief. That's uh, the statement of the Sahabas. And then the Khilaf came after. Naam. <laughs> Imam now goes into the issues related to the companions. He mentions the best after Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, after all of the prophets is Abu Bakr. After all of the prophets, Abu Bakr comes first. Then who's next? Umar. And then next is who? Uthman. These three they take precedence first, these three. الثلاثة, we give precedence to these three. As the companions of the Messenger وسلم, used to do that. What is he referring to as the companions used to? He's going to mention it here. Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, وسلم, The Messenger was alive. He was with us. The other companions will be sitting there. 
we would say Abu Bakr, Umar, Thumma, Uthman. That's how we would say, Thumma, Naskut, and then we become quiet. And the Prophet would be silent. Meaning in virtue, we will say Abu Bakr first. And then we will say Umar next. Then we would say Uthman next. And then we will all go silent. And the messenger will be silent. Wouldn't say anything to us. Meaning it was a word, taqreer, consent from the messenger. The other companions will accept that from us. This shows that the best of this ummah is who? Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. When the messenger was asked, Ayyun nasi ahabbu ilayka, who do you love the most? He said, Aisha. Qila min al-rijali, from the men, ya Rasulullah. Qala abuha, he said, her father. Who's her father? Abu Bakr. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he loved Abu Bakr the most. Walidhalika the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there is no person on the face of this earth who has any rights on me. The messenger saying this. Anyone who had any rights on me in this earth, except that I have fulfilled his rights. I have given him back what he has done for me. إِلَّا أَبَا بَكْرٍ فَتَرَكْتُ مُكَافَأَتَهُ لِلَّهِ Only Abu Bakr. I have left Allah to reward him. Abu Bakr, Allah can reward. I can't do it. You see, Nabi Allah Muhammad is saying that. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَوْ كُنْتُ مُتَّخِذًا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ خَلِيلًا if I was to ever take a Khalil on this earth, close friend, I would, I would take Abu Bakr as a closest friend. But I can't because I already have taken Allah as my Khalil. Are we all together? So Abu Bakr is the first, no one's before him. Are we all together, brothers? Abu Bakr is the first. He takes precedence over everybody, everyone. He takes precedence over everyone. The Sahabas in general, general the Sahabas are the best in this Ummah. There's no one like the companions in general. The Prophet said, Khayrun nasi qarni. The best of people is my generation. Which generation is the best? The Prophet. Well, the scholars, they say, every generation that's closer to the Prophet, the good is better in them. And then what? than the generation to come after. Are we all together, brothers? The more we are closer to the time of the Messenger, the more good that's amongst us. The further we get from the time of the Prophet, the further it gets worse. The Prophet said, لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده أشر منه That there doesn't come an eve, there does, there does not come a time. لا يأتي زمان, there does not come a time, except that the time after it is worse. Ponder here. Who came first, Hajjaj or Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? Hajjaj came first before Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Are we all together? So some of the Sahabas, ishtashkalahum dalik. This started to confuse them. Because the hadith says there doesn't come a time except the time after it is worse. And Hajjaj's time was very bad. But Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's time was what? It's glorious days for Muslims. They reached a point where the, the, the sadaqah, there was no one to give it to. The people were rich. No one, no one could qualify as poor. So how is it possible that Hajjaj's time was earlier and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's time was after and the one that came after is one was better than the one before it. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, they responded to this. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and he said, no, the issue isn't that a year has more crops and more greenery and more money than the year before it. But the time of Hajjad ibn Yusuf, even that though he was a tough person, there were more noble companions alive in his time than the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. True? How though? More companions were alive at the time of Hajjaj time, then they were at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Are we all together, brothers? Well, that's the virtue of the people of knowledge when they are amongst a people. When the people of knowledge are there, there's a lot of khair for the Ummah. The Prophet ﷺ, he told us, لا تسبوا أصحابي Do not insult my companions. Don't insult my companions. فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ I swear by the Lord, my soul is in his hand. لو أنفق أحدهم مثل أحد ذهبا لو أنفق أحدكم if one of you was to give the mountain of أحد it would not be equivalent to what 
a, a, a grain of barley or wheat that they gave with their palms like that and you gave the mountain of Uhud of gold and they just claim with barley or wheat the Sahabas will still be more than you why? their hearts noble people radiallahu ta'ala anhum then a group deviated here and there's a particular group that deviated here who what did they do? they put down the status of Abu Bakr the Rafidah they put down the status of Abu Bakr the Umar and Uthman but the truth is are they trying to attack Umar and Abu Bakr and Uthman per se is that what they're trying to attack no they really want to attack the Prophet because if the Prophet and the people around him are criminals what is he what does he become Al-Mubarri'ah min fawqi sab'i samawat Aisha was freed from the allegation ayat that is going to be recited ila an yarith Allah al-ardh wa man 'alayha until the day of judgment inna alladhina ja'u bil ifki usbatu minkum la tahsabu sharran lakum bal huwa khayrun lakum li kulli imri'in minhum aktasaba min al-ith ayat that will be read until the day of judgment Allah freed her from the allegation a people who slander her and carry on slandering her are they insulting Aisha her, is it her who they want or is it that they want to insult the Prophet ﷺ? Because if you insult his wife, what does that make it? What does that make him? What does he become? You have to think here. This is where it's going. It's heading that direction. If Abu Huraira drops, thousands of the hadiths in your religion is going to go. Are we all together? If Abu Bakr goes, a lot of knowledge and the deen is going to go. Are we all together? So we have to understand that Allah has blessed the people of the Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah. Allah blessed us with chain of narration asanid we have chains these people don't have chains there's not one chain that they can go back to in the quran the rafi they don't have one salad to the quran that they read today they're disconnected from the quran are we all together you are connected to it you have that source that's what they are jealous of that's what they want to take away from you so you cannot insult the companions of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's from our aqidah not to insult them. We love them, but we also believe they are not what? They are not infallible from mistakes. The Sahabas are not free from mistakes. They can do mistakes. They're human beings. This is one thing we all have to affirm, that the companions are not like the Prophet wasallam. And this is the, one, the thing that we have, to, we have to balance between, that the Sahabas are below the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and they're lower than him alayhi salatu wasalam but they are not like us Allah gave them that virtue subhanahu wa ta'ala then if you bring to me Abu Bakr did this mistake and he was corrected or Umar did this mistake and he was corrected or Uthman did this mistake and he was corrected you've not taken away from him suhbah and he's placed in Jannah you've only proven to me that he's not what? that he's not infallible you have to always remember that this is a qaida muhimma. The mistakes that happen between the companions, what does it show to us? That they are what? Human beings. But they are still noble and still righteous. The way Allah protected us from being there that day, having to not participate in that battle, then we also have to be safe from not opening our tongues to the companions. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. All of them wanted Jannah. All of them wanted Khair. We have to believe this. So Imam Muhammad is pointing, pointing that. The question here is, who is the best in the companions? Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman? And then comes after that who? The other remaining members of Shura. The five remaining from the Shura. Who were they? Umar, did he not make a committee of people? Umar made a committee of people and he chose who? The best of people. The elite, the Nukhab he chose. From them was who? Ali ibn Abi Talib, Talha, Talha ibn Ubaidillahi, Zubair ibn Awam, Abdurrahman ibn Awfin, Sa'ad. All of them, they were, if they lived, they were rightful. They had the rights to become Khulafa, the leaders of the Muslims. All of them. After that, who is it? The people of Badr. The people of Badr. Allah gave them a status no one else is going to gain. What did Allah say to them? Allah said to the people of Badr, I'malu ma shi'tum. Do as you wish. As you wish. Do as you wish. 
Allah has forgiven you. No one is being given that. Imagine that. There was a noble companion, his name was Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a. His name was what? Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a. Hatib, he wrote a letter to the Quraysh. He wrote a letter to Quraysh informing them about a battle that the messenger was going to wage on Quraysh. He conveyed a secret, a military strategy that the Prophet planned out with his companions. Hatib sent a letter and the letter reached Quraysh. It was, it was on its way to Quraysh. It was about to get to them. Yes, the Messenger of Allah, a revelation was sent to him. He was informed that there's a man, sorry, there's a person who's carrying that letter. It needs to be intercepted. So, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Miqdad ibn Awsin, and Zubair ibn Awam. Different, word, different narrations mention these three. Okay? They all went to a valley called Wadi Khakh. When they came to this valley, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Miqdad and Zubair ibn Awam, they saw a woman and they said to her, we've been informed and we've been told that you are carrying a secret regarding our, us, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ. can you give it to us? They didn't know what to expect. She said, I haven't got anything. Zubair and Miqdad said, okay, let's go. Ali said, la, 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 the Prophet said it. She's carrying it. He said, if you don't give it to me, I'll rip the clothes off from you and I'll bring it out. Give it to me. Then she opened her hair, she plaited it inside her hair. So she unplaited her hair, she got it out, and she gave it to Ali ibn Abi Talib. At the top of the letter, what does it say? From Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a to Quraysh. He's telling him a secret. The letter, when it reached the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet looked at the letter, or the letter was read for the Prophet, because the Prophet couldn't read. And he asked, Hatib, call him for me. They called him. Hatib, why did you do this? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't do this because I wanted to leave Islam or etc. But I have a family in Mecca. I have family members. If I don't show Quraysh somehow, some, something, they don't get something from me, they will punish my family. The rest of the companions, they're from a big tribe. I'm not from a big tribe. So there's no reason for them to respect my children and my family there. So I have to do something for them to take care of me. To take, take care, to take care of my children. Umar stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, da'ni adribu unuqa hadha al-munafiq. Umar stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, let me slice the neck of this man, the hypocrite. Let me kill him. Then the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, he said, khallu sabilahu, leave him alone. Don't touch him. And then the Prophet said to them, do you not know the Hatim participated in the Battle of Badr? And do you know what Allah said to the people of Badr? Allah looked at the hearts of the people of Badr and He said to them, Inna Allah ala qulubi ahlil Badr. Allah looked at the hearts of the people of Badr and Allah said to them, do what you wish. Allah has forgiven, forgiven you for everything. So they're the highest. Al Badr is not normal. It's a great station. Who come, like in Al Badr, how, how many people participated in Badr? Muhajirin and who? I'm sorry, from the, uns the people of Badr of the Muhajirin are better than the, be the people of Badr of the Ansar. The Muhajirin are better than the Ansar. Are we all together, brothers? If you look at the Quran, all of it, Allah always mentions the, the Muhajirin first before He mentions the Ansar. Muhajirin come first, they're the highest station. Why? Because they left their houses, they left their lands, they left everything. And you have to understand, Hijrah was not. Do you all know? Uh, question. Why did the Prophet use an example of Hijrah in this hadith? Why did he not use Salah? Why did he not use Zakat? Why did he not use Hajj? Why did the Prophet use Hijrah here? Huh? Because Hijrah should have uh, intention. I mean, yeah. But Salah has to have intention as well. Yeah, it can be, it can have two, uh, 
You started off good, but then you went another direction, huh? Yeah? So the answer is between you two, which is Kuffar of Quraysh and the Arabs before never knew Hijrah. Hijrah was a form of defeat. These were tribal people. They fought one another and they never left their lands for no one. How could they leave your land? How can you, you know, when you leave your land, you've, you've retreated and you've left. You've accepted humiliation and beat. They never do that. Till the last man standing, they fight. And they stay in that land. Are you with me? Islam came in the concept of Hijrah. My land, my money, my investment, my everything, I'm going to walk away from it. No. It was hard for them. Are you with me, brothers? And the Sahabas, they looked back at their houses. Some of them couldn't take their children and their women. And so the children were grabbing them from the bottom of their garments. Dad. And they were taking their children off from themselves. And they were walking away to go to the place. They don't have no house waiting for them. They have nothing waiting for them. They left their houses, their belongings with the furniture. Everything is in there, nothing. And they go into a place, they don't know what's going to happen. Where are they going to sleep? Where are they going to go? What is going to happen when they go to Medina? How are they going to be treated? How are they going to do things? وَلِذَلِكَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى يَسَلُ وَمَنْ يُهَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَثِيرًا وَسَعَى The one who does hijrah for the sake of Allah. Well, there's a story of a man who did a hijrah. An old, old man. He stayed in Mecca. He walked around in the city of Mecca. And he could hear them talking about Nabi Muhammad. Insulting the Prophet of Allah. Sh- trying to shame him. Call him magician. Call him different names. And he kept hearing that in Medina... The Prophet resides there with his companions, spreading the deen of Allah, learning. Old man, he didn't have to do hijrah. Because the ayah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَوَفَاهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ظَالِمِي أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ قَالُوا كُنَّا مُسْتَضْعَفِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا أَلَمْ تَكُنْ أَرْضُ اللَّهِ وَاسَعْ فَتُهَاجِرُوا فِيهَا فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَعَنَّمْ وَسَاعَةَ مَصِيرًا إِلَّا الْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ وَالنِّسَاء The weak men, they don't have to do hijrah. So he's a weak man, he doesn't have to leave Mecca. But his heart couldn't accept that the, the Prophet will be sh- Disrespected like this. His heart couldn't accept that the deen of Allah will be taught in Medina and I'm here not learning anything. So he, he got ready. He mounted his riding beast and then he made his way to Medina as he's in the middle of the desert. You have to understand this is not air conditioner in the middle of the desert when he realized he looked back, he's not in Mecca, he looked forward, he's not to Medina yet, he's in the middle. He realized he's not going to live. He grabbed both of his hands and he said, Allahumma hadhi bay'atul laka, oh Allah, this is a pledge of allegiance to you. And they took his hand again and then he said, Allahumma hadhi bay'atul li rasulik. Because he wanted to go to Medina to do pledge of allegiance with the messenger. Oh Allah, this is a bay'ah for you, the messenger. And then, fil ardi. He fell on the ground and he died. And the ayah came down regarding him. وَمَنْ يُهَاجِرْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَجِدْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُرَاغَمًا كَثِيرًا وَسَعًا وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ مُهَاجِرًا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ يُدْرِكُ الْمَوْتُ فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Pay attention here. And the one who dies in the way to do hijrah, he dies on the way and he doesn't get to his destination. Allah says, فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ His reward is with Allah. The scholars, they said, the reward wasn't mentioned here. He's going to get a reward with Allah. The reason why Allah didn't mention it is because how is Allah? He's one whose treasures are vast. Leave it to him. There's no limitation to this hijrah. The reward that the person gets when they leave their land, their home, their belongings, their everything. This is something big. So that's why the muhajireen, they even got higher station than what? Than Ansar. Because the Ansar were in their own comfort. Even though the Ansar said, Ya Rasulullah, لو سلكت واديًا If you take a valley, Allah will take that valley with you. The Prophet if you remember the battle of, uh, the battle of Uhud, when the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wanted to fight, he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
he consulted the companions, all of them, to take their mind, the decisions. The, 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 the Sahabas from the Muhajirin kept standing. Abu Bakr stood up, he sat down. And then Talha ibn Ubaidillah stood up and he sat down. Every time the Prophet when Muhajirin speak, he, he looks around, he goes, anyone else want to say something? And then Sa'ad ibn Ubaidah stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, It's like you want us, Ansar. It's like you want the Ansar to speak. And the Messenger said, yes, I want you guys to speak. They said, Ya Rasulullah, la naqulu laka kama qalit Banu Israel li Musa. We're not going to say to you what the Banu Israel said to Nabi Lahi Musa, idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila, inna ha huna qa'idun. You and your Lord go and fight, we will sit here and wait for you. We won't say that to you. But what we will say to you is, idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila, inna ma'akuma muqatilun. You and your Lord fight, and we're going to fight beside you, shoulder to shoulder. The reason why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to consult the Ansar was because, number one, the original pledge of allegiance that he had with Ansar was that they would protect him in where? In Medina, not outside Medina. And this battle of Uhud was outside Medina. So he just wanted to know, are they still going to defend this deen? Yeah? Also, why did he want to hear their side and not the Ansar, the Muhajirin? Because the most casualties will come from who? The Ansar. And the Ansar, they proved their point that day. They stood up and they defended the deen of Allah. These companions, this is their station. They're very high. May Allah be pleased with all of them. May Allah be pleased with all of them. Naam. Like in, now, what's the definition of a companion? Hey, who can define a companion for me? What is a companion? Hey, hey, what's a companion? Somebody who has met the Prophet Abu Jahl met the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is he a companion? Remember, we want a definition. Ah, uh, Shaheed Fadl. Mm. Even if he apostated in between? As long as you've died upon Islam. Oh, yeah? Mm, that's the most comprehensive. The reason why yours is somebody could have met the Prophet and then the Prophet died and they believed him after he died. So when he saw the Prophet, he believed in him while he sees him. Are you with me, brothers? Sorry, he met the Prophet, sorry, not seeing the Prophet because Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum was blind. He never saw the Prophet. So we say, Malakiya Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mu'minan bi. Someone who met the Prophet in a state of Iman. Like when he met him, he was a believer. Mata al imani, and he died upon iman. Third point, even if he postated for a period of time, it doesn't matter. Now, yeah, every hukum shari in the religion, taklif is a prophet. Being a being a sahabi is a station you reach. Sahih. Being a salih, a righteous pers person, it's a station you reach, correct? So, all of those, they need taklif. You have to be a burdened person. You have to be sane and you have to reach age of puberty. Yeah. You wouldn't say a little child is salih. No, would you say he's not? Are you with me, brothers? Taklif is needed. The person has to reach age of puberty. Now. Does anyone here, sorry, I'm sorry, second time, sorry. Does anyone here know the youngest companion? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. The youngest companion. Who? No, no, no. Abdullah ibn Abbas, no. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Abbas is younger than him. Huh? Zubair ibn Awam? Huh? Homer, Homer, Homer. You guys are saying big people. What a companion. Homer, all of you guys. That's what you have to find out. Who was the youngest companion who we know? Man.
Al Imam Ahmed goes into a very powerful issue, and that is the issue relating to the Muslim leader. How is our stance regarding the Muslim leader who governs the Muslims? The Muslim leader, we have to listen and obey him. The Muslim leader who is a Muslim has to be heard and obeyed. Whether he is obedient or whether he is oppressive. Whether he lashes you and he takes all of your money or whether he doesn't. Whether you like him or whether you don't. It's from the aqid of Ahl Sunnah that you listen and you obey him. This is not an issue of difference of opinion. It doesn't accept no difference of opinion. It's usul Ahl Sunnah we're talking about here. It's an ijma. As-sam'u wa ta'a li a'imati al-muslimina amma al-mu'minina al-barri wa al-fajir the obedient one who is righteous and the fasiq fajir one who drinks khamar who does zina who kills who massacres he has to be heard and obeyed. Pay attention. Al-Imam Ahmad then mentions that doesn't mean that the evil that he's doing we like it. Pay attention. The evil is not liked. And no one is supporting the evil. But the obedience has to be done to him and the listening. A point I want to mention and I want you to focus. The leader comes in two ways. There's two ways that the leader can come. The first one is that he comes through a tariq shar'i. Tariq shar'i means what? A tariq shar'i means he, Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd, they appoint him, they choose him, they, he doesn't want it, he's being chosen, he has, they choose him based on characteristics that he has, and they, that's it. Who are the Ahlul Halli Wal Aqd is another discussion. That's the shari, Tariq Shari. There's another way which is Tariq which is Ghayru Shari. It's not Shari. It's not a legislated, it's not in the Sharia to do this. And that is, he comes with force. One day he takes over the whole country. In the morning on the radio it's announced that another ruler is governing the country. Once things go into his hands and he run, he, everything is, he controls it, Ali Imam Ahmed says you have to hear and obey him. Even if he wasn't chosen by the people, or the Ahlul Halu al never chose him, they never elected him, he came with force, he f f imposed himself on the people. Now that the issue is in his hands, he's got control over the country. No one's allowed to fight with him. Are we all together, brothers? From the ways that are not shara'i, they are not shara'i. But if he comes through it, he has to be heard and obeyed, is elections. Elections is other than a shara'i way. If he comes through that way, he still has to be heard and obeyed. Are we all together, brothers? Am I making sense here? He has to be heard and obeyed. You have to pray salah behind him. Why do they say, scholars, that you have to pray Salah behind him? Because that, th those days, the leader would lead the people to Salah. He would come out in the open and he would lead. The ones who didn't believe him to be a legit legitimate leader, who were against him, they would never be seen in the, in the masjid. They would say, I'm not praying behind him, he's not a legit really leader. He, that was their way of taking their back, their bay'ah from him. Are we all together? And the other thing is, you, if he's, he drinks khamar, he commits zina, he does everything, you still have to give him the sadaqah money. It has to go to him. Upon you, you fulfilled your part. And Imam Muhammad saying this. وَصَلَاةُ الْجُمْعَةِ خَلْفَهُ وَخَلْفِ مَنْ وَلَّاهُ جَائِزَةٌ بَاقِيَةٌ He said. وَدَفْعُ الصَّدَقَاتِ إِلَيْهِمْ جَائِزَةٌ نَافِذَةٌ مَنْ دَفْعَا إِلَيْهِمْ أَجْزَأَتْ عَنْهُ بَرًّا كَانَ أُفَاجِرًا Even He's going to use it, he's going to eat it. Upon you is just to give him the money. Ada aqidah to Sunnah. And Imam Ahmed is saying this. It's in his book. Uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal is saying this. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Yeah? Wallahi, this is the way to save people's bloods. This is going to, going to save people's bloods. Every time you get an opportunity, you go on the radio or you tweet something on Instagram and you say something about the leader and you get the people to go up against him and then he gets angry and he massacres the people and he kills the people we all understand what happens so look around you what's happening around the Muslim world if the people just listened and they obeyed and they followed this text 
a lot of blood would have been saved. May Allah save the bloods of the Muslims wherever they are in the world and bring khair and good for them. So remember that as sam'u wa ta'a and the evidence for that is the hadith of Ubadat ibn Samit that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said bay'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we gave bay'a to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sam'u wa ta'a that we will listen to our leaders and we obey them fi man shatina wa makrahina wa usrina wa yusrina wa atharatun alayna wa alla nunazi' al-amra ahlahu illa an naru kufran bawahan indakum min Allah illa an taru kufran bawahan indakum min Allah fihi burhan that we will listen and that we will obey and that we will listen to our leaders even at the times when we like it and the times when we like, we don't like to, we'll still listen. The times of ease and the times of... One of the things that shocked me, Ali Imam Muhammad was in... He was put in where? He was put in prison, Ali Imam Muhammad. By a people who said that the Quran is created. They put him in prison, they chained him, he was in prison. You know what Ali Imam Muhammad said? Ahmed said, if they open these chains from me, and they open the gates of the prison, Wallahi, I wouldn't leave unless they tell me to leave. I will not walk out of my prison cell unless the leader says leave the prison. There's no need to chain me. I will listen to him even then in my prison. I will stay inside it for as long as he tells me to stay inside the prison. Are you with me brothers? But the issue I believe that the Quran is not created, I hold on to this. But the, my, the leader, I listen and I obey him. Are you with me brothers? It's very important. Naam. Look at Imam Muhammad said. It is not permissible to go against the Muslim leader and to uprise against him and to protest against him and to demonstrate against him. It's not permissible. Anyone from the people. Anyone who does this. What did Imam Muhammad say? He said he's an innovator. He's upon a path other than the Sunnah. Al Imam Muhammad is saying this. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said historically ابن تيمية followed this issue up historically he said ابن تيمية كتاب من هذه السنة النبوية he said I have looked at the history every people who went against their leader they've never brought any good that they were hoping to achieve achieve by going against the leader ابن تيمية says باستقراء by following up every event that historically took place أحمد said there was never a time that a people uprose against their leader. They protest and they went against the leader, except that they brought more harm than any good that they were looking for. Naam. And Imam Ahmed goes into an issue of fighting against the Lusus and the Khawarij. Lusus are thieves. Can you fight with a thief? And Imam Ahmed says, if the thief comes into your house and he wants to do something to you, you can fight him. But you have to repel him and he's evil to the bare minimum. He comes with nothing. He comes into the house. And if you come out and you say, shoo, or you, he sees you, he's going to run out. 
then you use that and that's enough. If he comes into the house and you know he won't run out unless he sees you've got a stick or something, and then you whack him with the stick and he runs out, then you use that. And if he has a weapon and he, you're scared he might use the weapon against you, for you to defend yourself, you're allowed to use that weapon. But you always have to use the bare minimum to defend yourself. The difference is, what about if he's not coming to you to attack you? He's outside, what do you do? At that time, that's not your job. Whose job is that? It's the leader. The, it's the leader to deal with him. Are we all together? The same is with the khawarij. If he comes to attack you in your, your house, your property, then you can defend yourself. But if he's out there, you're not to touch him. The only one who needs to destroy and fight with the khawarij is who? The Muslim leader. That's his job to fight with him. That's what Imam Ahmed is pointing out here. And that's where the ayah came down. إِنَّمَا جَزَاءُ الَّذِينَ يُحَارِبُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَيَسْعَوْنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَسَادًا أَنْ يُقَتَّلُوا أَوْ يُصَلَّبُوا Who is the one who kills them and fights them? The ones that fight them and kills them is the... Um, the one that fights them and kills them is the Muslim leader. He's the one who does it. Naam. The author, rahimahullah, he goes into a mas'ala known as a Muslim. He's not a disbeliever. He's a Muslim. He dies. Can we promise him Jannah? Can we promise a person Jannah and say he's from Ahlul Jannah? Just because he did something good. Someone done something good. What do we do? Do we promise them Jannah because of the good that they've done? Someone who's been praying for so many years, every day we see him in the masjid crying and he's ibad and everything. And Imam Muhammad said, We can never say that you are from the people of Jannah and we can never say that you're from the people of the Hellfire. We can't. Narju li the one that's righteous, we hope, inshallah, Jannah for him. And the one who is doing sins, we fear for him, the Muslim. This is important. We hope Allah's mercy for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's mercy, we hope for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, and this is to show us that the issue isn't what you can see from the person. The reason why we can't say this, is from the, this, is, this person is from the people of Jannah and this person is from the people of the Hellfire, the reason why we can't say it is because it's built and it's based on what's in the people's heart, not what we can, what we can see. The Prophet sallallahu he said, لا يغتقل الجنة he will not enter Jannah. من في قلبي مثقال ذرة من كبر The one who has a mustard seed of arrogance in his heart. So we can never tell what's in someone's heart. We will never be able to tell. You can see a person praying with salah, a person who's doing ruku', a person who's crying, but you, you don't know whether arrogance is in his heart, right? You don't know if he has disbelief in his heart. Allah told the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that in the city of Medina there are people who are hypocrites even you don't know them Muhammad. Based on the ayah what's the ayah? مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ مَرَدُوا عَلَى نِفَاقِ لَا تَعْلَمُهُمْ نَحْنُ نَعْلَمُهُمْ سَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ What's the beginning? وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ There are people in the city of Medina who are residing with you, Muhammad. مَرَدُوا عَلَى النِفَاقِ Hypocrisy has overcome them. لَا تَعْلَمُهُمْ You don't know them, Muhammad. We know them. We're going to punish them severely the day of judgment. So there are hypocrites in Medina that the messenger didn't know. They used to pray with him, they used to fast with him, they would do good deeds with him. So why can't there be amongst the Muslims today? There can be. So you might be, prom you might be promising a hypocrite Jannah. Or there might be a Muslim who is drinking khamar, who is lying, who is cheating, who is very bad. And you think to yourself, this man he can never enter Jannah. But his heart is very big. And Allah Azza wa Jalla to Allah. That doesn't mean what he's doing is good. And he also needs to be corrected for the good that he does. 
but that still cannot make you say because of all of this that you're doing you're from the people of the hellfire so remember we can only see what is apparent and Jannah doesn't only accept what's apparent it also needs what's in the what's in the heart both of them to be together that's important now uh. No, 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 no. The Imam, the brother asked a very good question. He said, are, are we talking about Muslims or non-Muslims? Or are we talking about both? We say this is only referring to the Muslims. We are talking about who? The Muslims only. Ahlul Qibla. We're not talking about the disbelievers. Should we leave the questions to the end? Yeah? Yeah, brothers. Let's leave the questions to them now. And Imam Muhammad Rahimahullah, now he's going into the issue of murtakib al-kabira وَمَنْ لَقِيَ اللَّهَ بِذَنْبٍ يَجِبُ لَهُ بِالنَّارِ تَائِبًا غَيْرَ مُسِرٍ عَلَيْهِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ وَيَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَعْفُ عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ A person does sins عقيدت أهل السنة والجماعة is that the sins can harm your iman this is a refutation on the murja who believe لا يضر مع الإيمان معصية after you've attained Iman, any sin that you do cannot harm your Iman. So no problem. al Sunnah believe, of course it can harm your Iman. It decreases your Iman, so you need to repent from it. The sins that you need to repent, Omar, that won't be cleansed from, your, from you are the sins, the major sins. The major sins for it to be cleared of your record. What do you need, brothers? A tawbah. That's the major sins. The minor sins lacking, there are other things that can clean it for you. Al umrah to ila al umrah to kafara to lima baynahuma. Umrah from one umrah, the wudu. These little things can remove the what? The sunnah that you pray, the wajibat that you pray. Inna al hasanati ish. Yudhibna sayyat. Which sayyat? The minor sins. The good that you do, the minor sins, it will be eradicated from the good that you've done. Like in the major sins, they always need what? They always need repentance. So Imam Ahmad rahimahullah he mentions that here. Walidalik Allah said in the ayah, wa huwa alladhi yaqbalu tawbata an ibadihi wa ya'fu an sayyat. That's where he took it from. The ayah is in Surah to Ish. What Surah is it? وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ وَيَعْفُوا عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ سورة الشورة آية 25 okay. سورة الشورة إيش آية 25 The repentance brothers has three pillars if it's for Allah and there's an extra fourth pillar if it's a human being if it's Allah the first pillar for the repentance is that you regret it grief and Nedim. Whenever you remember it, you're like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Regret. Sincere regret. I like that. Def I like that. Sah. Sincere. Nedim. You sincerely regret it. Is a person who's publicizing their sins, are they regretting it? Back in the days, what I used to do, Allahu Akbar, I don't want to even go in. You know what I mean? Is that person sincerely regretting what they're doing? Yeah. Ah, it's very dangerous. If you murdered someone, would you ever talk about it like that? Yeah? Would you ever say, yeah, that time when I murdered a couple of people and I repented to Allah, would you ever say that? So why would you say the same about the zina and the haram and the shurbul khamar that you did? Are we all together, brothers? You're publicizing it. You're talking about it in a boastful manner. That's what it is. You have to be regretful. To hide it to yourself. The second one is, ayah. Ha. 
Al-Azmu Allah Ya'uda Ilayhi. You make a decision, a sincere decision in your heart that I'm never going to do this sin again. You see, there's a difference between your, you making this sincere intention not to do it and it happening from you after you've tried. There's a difference. Are we all together? Like in you making that sincere decision, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, I'm not going to do it. If you're like, I, I'll, I'll try it out later. I'll see. That's not. It has to be al-azm. It has to be unwavering conviction. I'm never going to do this again. Hey, what's the third? Yeah? We mentioned three, right? Hey, the third one is? It's al iqla'u min al-dham. Get away from the sin. You can't repent whilst you're in the middle of the sin. It's al iqla'. Get away from the sin. If you have a, a, a person who keeps bringing you to the sin, get away from that person. If your sin is connected to gadgets, your mobile phone or your, your computer, or that's what's causing you to do this haram, get rid of it. Get an old phone and call the people from that. Wallahi, wallahi. You're not repenting whilst your sin is connected to something and that thing is still with you. Get rid of it. If it's a person who's leading you to that sin, get rid of that person. Are we all together, brothers? Those are the, if you do a sin with you and Allah. What about if it's a person's sin? You have to do those three, and what's the fourth one? If it's someone's rights, what do you say? You took someone's money, what do you do? You give it back to them. Wallahi, the person who the Akhirah is big in their eyes and Akhirah means a lot to them, they will never leave this world with people's rights on your neck. You will always remember them, please forgive me, I'm working towards it, forgive me, just remind them. Tahallul min al Because the Day of Judgment is not dirhams or dinar or pennies or pounds or no, dollar or, or cent. It's a'mal actions, a time when you don't want anyone to touch your deeds because our deeds are already little, true or false. The little we, we, we came with, we don't want anyone to take it away from us, brothers. So, so free yourself from the people. But there's a brother you know, you spoke bad about him, you said something very bad about him, and you know that if you go to him and you say to him, Akhi, I said something about you, and he's going to say, what did you say about me? And then what you said about him wasn't very good, and you know this could cause a greater problem, what do you do? Hey, wait, 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 wait. You say, ask Allah to forgive. Hey, what do you do? What you do is that to whom you spoke bad about, you go to him and uh, uh, change his thinking about that person by saying something good about him. But do you let the person that you spoke bad about, do you, do you let them know? No. So you hide it from him, huh? You don't tell him, huh? Yeah, it's sahih. Don't tell him. Because it's going to lead to a greater problem. But whenever you see other people mention good of him, the bad that you say, change it with good. Every time you get an opportunity to say that, brother, Rafa Allahu Qadra. Oh Allah raise his station. He's an honorable man. I know nothing except good of him. Ah, oh, may Allah forgive him. Any opportunity you get, you say that about him. The author, rahimahullah, he goes into the one who doesn't repent from the sin. He doesn't. He chooses not to repent from the sin. Then he deserves to be punished. Look what the author said. He deserves to be punished. There's a difference between deserves and he is punished. Who, which one? What's the difference? Ah. Huh? Beautiful, amazing. Qadistawjaba means that the punishment may not be done to him. He came with a sin of committing zina, drinking khamar, lying. 
this deserves punishment. But will he necessarily be punished? No. تَحْتَ مَشِيئَةِ اللَّهِ إِنْ شَاءَ عَفَا عَنْهُ وَإِنْ شَاءَ غَفَرَهُ He's under the Mashi'ah, the will of Allah Azza wa Jalla. If Allah wills, He'll punish him. And if Allah wills, He forgives him. وَلِذَلِكَ it comes under the ayah, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Anything other than shirk is under the Mashi'ah of Allah. It's under Allah's will. If He wants, He can punish you for it. And if He wishes, He can forgive you for it. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opposite is true. Entering Jannah, it doesn't necessarily mean that you pray the Salah, you gave Zakat, you fast in the month of Ramadan, you did Hajj. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get Jannah for it. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَن يَدْخُلَ أَحَدُكُمْ That one of you will not enter Jannah بِعَمَلِهِ with his, own, with his action and his hard work. قِيلَ وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ It was then said to the Messenger, even you. And then the Messenger said, even me. إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Unless Allah bestows his virtue and his mercy on me, no one only enters Jannah because of his righteous deeds. Are we all together? Your righteous deeds doesn't even equate to the eyesight that Allah has given you. Are we all together? And the hearing that you've been given. So when you see a, a people entering Jannah, it's because of Allah's Rahmah. And if you see a people going to the hellfire, it's because of Allah's justice. Do you remember that? The ones who enter Jannah are because of Allah's mercy. And the ones who enter the hellfire are because of Allah's what? Justice. Adl. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some people they say, how is it that Allah creates a creation and He takes them to the hellfire? Isn't that not unfair? Isn't that unfair? We will say no. Because to enter Jannah in the first place is a privilege. It's an honor. It's a mercy. You can never do enough to enter Jannah anyways. Because remember, what Allah gave you already, you can't even repay that. Are we all together, brothers? People reward you after you do good, they reward you. Allah rewarded you with eyesight and hearing and seeing and health before you could even do any good actions. So even if you end up in the hellfire, you've received good already from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Are we all together? And that's why we say, وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا Allah wa Ta'ala is truthful in His speech and He's just in His judgments. And this is what we have to always remember, brothers. Islam came to fulfill justice and not equality. You all know that, right? Islam came to fulfill justice. And it didn't come to fulfill equality. Equality is not justice. Are we all together, brothers? For instance, giving a newborn child food that an older person can eat is injustice. But it's equality. So Islam came to fulfill justice. Women and men, Allah came to fulfill justice for them. But Islam is not ever wanting to make things equal. Are we all together? So Adl is characteristic of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Naam. Oh, the disbeliever lakin. If he meets Allah Azza wa Jalla the day of judgment, with disbelief, does he fall under Tahta Mashiatillah? Does he fall under Allah's will if he wants he forgives him or if he wants he doesn't? No. Allah already told us what he's going to do with him. Allah says in the Quran, Innahuma Yushrik Billahi Fakad Haram Allahu Alihi Jannah. Wama uwahun na wama lidali mina min ansar. If a person is a disbeliever, then Jannah is made haram from him. And the hellfire is his final abode. That's where he's going to dwell in for the rest of his life. But the condition here, brothers, is that he dies upon disbelief. There's two places in the Quran 
One is in Surah Ali Imran. Allah says, Inna ladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffarun falan, yaqab, falan yuqbala ahadihim mithlu mithlu a, mithlu al-ardi mithlu ash? Mithlu, mithlu mil, il, mil'u al-ardi mithlu mil'u al-ardi wa lawish tadabi, sah? Firas was the ayah. There's no mithlu in there. Am I squeezing it in there? I'm confusing with the other ayah, Surah 2. Surah Muhammad. What's the ayah of Surah Muhammad? Firas, inna ladhina kafaru wa matu. Inna ladhina kafaru wa saddu an sabili lahi thumma matu wa hum kufarun. Falan yaghfir Allahu lahum. Those are the two places where Allah mentions inna ladhina kafaru wa matu. Thumma matu. Amma matu, they die upon disbelief. They have to die with it. Okay? What about if they don't die and they live in this world? No problem. Last minute they can repent. إِنَّ حَدَكُمْ يُجْمَعُ خَلْقُوا فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّي أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا نُطْفَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ عَلَقَةَ مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ مُضْغَةَ مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكَ فَيُنْفَقُ فِيهِ الرُّوحُ يُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتٍ بِكَتْبِ رِزْقِهِ وَأَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ شَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسُ فَوَالَّذِي لَا فَوَالَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ غَيْرُهُ إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعٌ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا So the person can repent their last moments. The hadith is talking about a person who is doing good for the rest of his life. The last minute before he's about to die, he apostates and he leaves everything. The opposite is true. What matters is in the amalu ish bil khawatin. What matters is what you die upon the last moments. Okay, these people they have to die upon uh, disbelief. ولذلك the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم what did he say to Abu Talib? What did he say to him? Say, he said to him, قل لا إله إلا الله كلمة كلمة أحاج لك بها يوم القيامة. Say لا إله إلا الله I want to argue for you the day of judgment. Are you with me? Just say that word. I, there's a case open for you now. لكن أبو طالب what did he say? هو على ملة عبد المطلب. He said, no, I'm upon the religion of Abdul Muttalib. I'm not going to leave the path of my forefathers. Are we all together, brothers? So if a person dies upon shirk and this belief, is he going to enter the hellfire? Forever and he will never come out. Allah told us this. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. And the other ayah, inna man yushrik billahi faqad harram Allahu alayhi al-jannah wa ma'awahu al-nar wa ma'ali al-zalimina min ansar. Naam. وقد أحسن The author رحمه الله he talked about a very powerful issue which is the one who commits zina after marriage after he goes through a legal Islamic marriage and then he goes and he commits zina outside it that he will be stoned the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam did that now there used to be an ayah in the quran in which uh, it used to be called ayatul rajm the ayah was like this ash-shaykh wa ash-shaykhatu idha zayna ya farjumuhum al-battata nakala min allah i think wallahu azizul hakim i think that's how the ayah used to go ash-shaykh wa ash-shaykhatu idha zayna ya farjumuhum al-battata if the man who went through marriage and the woman that went through marriage, if they both commit zina after marriage, فَرْجُمُهُمَا Stone them both to death. You see, that was an ayah that used to be read in the Quran. Was it abrogated? The wording was abrogated. What about the meaning? The ruling was abrogated. The ruling was not abrogated. Umar radiallahu anhu mentioned it, that it is not abrogated. He said, I'm scared that will come a time when a people will say that we do not find this ruling in the Quran. And then Umar said, the messenger did stoning والسلام, and stoning is in our religion. So it's done. Question, why did Imam Muhammad rahimahullah, bring this issue in an aqidah book? Hey. Yeah. 
another reason. Why did he bring an issue like this in Aqidah Risala? Huh? Sahih. He's taking it back to the issue which is at tamasuku bil kitab wa sunnah, holding on to the kitab and the sunnah. Some people reject the sunnah based on this. They will say, I don't find this in the Quran. It was later introduced in a tradition. And Imam Ahmad is talking from this issue from the angle of holding on to the what? Holding on to the kitab and the, and the sunnah. Now. He goes back to the issue of the companions, the Sahaba, anyone who tries to belittle the companions, tries to put down the companions. And Imam Muhammad said, Rahimahullah, kana mubtadi'an. He's an innovator, hatta yatarham alayhim jami'an, until he says to all of them, radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them. He has to say that. Wa yakunu qalbuhu, and his heart has to be lahum salima. His heart, his heart has to be clean for the companions. Wa lidalika, the Sahabas, the people who dislike them, and Imam Malik said, are the disbelievers. Because of the ayah Muhammad al-Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشِدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَارِ رُحَمَاءُ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ, يبتغون فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِ السُّجُودِ ذَلِكَ مَثَلٌ فِي التَّوْرَاةِ وَمَثَلٌ فِي الْإِنْجِيلِ كَزَرْعٍ أَخْرَجَ شَطَاهُ فَأَزَرَهُ فَاسْتَغْلَظَ فَاسْتَوَى عَلَى سُوقِهِ يُعْجِبُ الزُّرَّاعَ لِيَغِيظَ إيش لِيَغِيظَ بِهِمُ الْكُفَّارِ The sahabas were made so that the kuffar can hate them Allah says, Muhammadur Rasulullah, walladhina ish? Walladhina ma'ahu. The ones who are with him. Who are the ones with him? The Sahabas. Allah made their companions, Allah is saying in the ayah, لِيَغِيظَ بِهِمُ kuffar, So that the hearts of the disbelievers, rage and hate, can be placed in them towards the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then, and Imam Malik took from this, that the one who hates the companions, who has hiqt and ha- for the companions, is what a? A disbeliever. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا About the believers. What did Allah say? وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا غْفِرْ لَنَا وَالْإِقْوَانِينَ الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَ بِالْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ إِشْ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ رَوْفُ الرَّحِيمِ The believers, that's what they say. Allah forgive us and forgive us for our brothers who preceded us in good. Don't place in our hearts towards them hate and enmity towards them. So the Sahaba you have to love them, you have to admire them. The reason why is because they are hurras sharia those who guarded the religion. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, look what he said in the Quran. Allah said, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ And what after that? وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ And those who followed them in what? Those who followed them in good. What did Allah say? رضي الله Allah is saying, I'm pleased with three groups of people. Who are they? Muhajirin and what? Remember that, brothers. Allah said, I'm pleased with the Muhajirin and I'm pleased with what? And who, who from? Who after that? Those who follow them in good. We are not from the Muhajirin and we are not from the Ansar. We could be from the only party and the group that we can be from is which one? And those who follow them in good. Once we become those who follow them in good, what do we be, become? Radiallahu anhum. Allah is going to be pleased with us. So a group of people, Allah is saying, I am pleased with them. How could you not then be pleased with them? Sahab brothers. So Allah is pleased with the Ansar and Allah is pleased with the Muhajirin. Naam. The munafiq is two types. The munafiq is two types. There's a munafiq 
which is Akbar, the major munafiq. That's the major one. And that's the one that's not a believer. Such as Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salal and those who followed him. Those are the ones alladina yudhirun al-islama wa yubtinun al-kufra. They show Islam to the people, yaquluna bi afwahihim ma laysa ma laysa fi qulubihim. They say that which on their tongues, that which is not in their hearts. Those are the munafiqeen khullas, pure hypocrites. Are you with me? They're the ones who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah told us in the Quran, inna al-munafiqeen fi darki fi darki al-asari min al-nar. They are in the lowest position in the hellfire. There's another group of munafiqs, which is a second type. This is the minor hypocrites. Are we all together? And that's the one that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا حَدَثَ كَذِبْ If he talks to you, he's a liar. إِذَا حَدَثَ كَذِبْ وَإِذَا وَعَدَ أَخْلَفْ If he makes a promise to you, he breaks it. وَإِذَا تُبِنَ خَان If you entrust him with something, then he deceives it. And the fourth wording come, which is وَإِذَا خَاسَمَ فَجَرْ And if you go into a discussion and argument with him, he will always go overboard. He, his disputes don't stick to the point. He'll bring other things into this. Are we all together? These are the signs of the hypocrite. Like in the hypocrite here is what? It's not the one that is not a Muslim. He's a Muslim. Like in he has the traits of the hypocrites. Are we all together? He has other scholars, they call it kufr i'tiqadi, the first one. And the second one, they call it kufr amali. Ama nifaq amali. The first one, they call it nifaq i'tiqadi. And the second one, they call it nifaq amali. Nifaq amali. So if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, the ones that are being spoken about are which one? The ones, the first two group, which are the i'tiqadi. They're the i'tiqadi. لَقَالُوا الَّذِينَ They say, Allah Taala says, وَإِذَا لَقُوا وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَى الشَّيَاطِينِ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَهْزِئُونَ اللَّهُ يَسْتَهْزِئُ بِهِمْ وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ إن هذا آية الله تبارك وتعالى يسيس يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم هم العدو فحذرهم قاتلهم الله أن يفكون one of the signs of the hypocrites is every criticism that's been put out there they think it's been directed at them because they know what they are upon are we all together Allah told us that everything they think, when you say it, they say, what, what are you attacking me for? The reason why they feel that way is because they are evil inside and they are evil and they just think everyone has found out about what's inside them. So they, they expose themselves. They expose themselves, the munafiqeen. And the scholars, they said that the munafiqeen only come when Islam is strong. When it's weak, they're not there. There was no munafiq in Mecca. Sah? Where did the munafiqin come? The munafiqin came in Medina when the Prophet had a government. Because why would you be on two sides if you don't see benefit in it? Are you with me? Naam. <laughs> Imam Ahmed went into a mas'ala muhim jiddan 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 brothers pay attention here which is the issue of you find in the Quran or in the Sunnah sometimes the word kufr is used and some people they rush to what? Kufr Akbar major kufr there are times that the term kufr is only used as a minor and there are times it's used as a major the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, لا ترجعوا بعدي كفارا يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض 
after me do not become kuffar killing one another so the hadith showing killing one another is a what you're a kafir if you do that does that mean you kufr akbar yeah the reason why we know that killing one another is not kufr akbar even though the hadith said it kufr but we know it's not intended as it as to be the kufr akbar how because Allah said, Ya Iladina Amanu Kutib Alikum Kusasu fil Katla, Al Hurru bil Hurri, Wal Abdu bil Abdi Wal Unta, Bil Unta. Faman Ufiya Lahu Min Ahi, your brother. He killed your family member. Allah is saying, Forgive your brother. If you forgive your brother, he's still your brother. brother. A clear verse would be, Wa in Ta'i Fatani Minal Mumini Nakhtatalu, Fasli Hubayna Huma, Fa in Bagat Ihda Huma Alal Ukra Fakatilu, Leti Tabri Hatta Tafi'a Ila Amri La. After Allah mentioned, parties killing one another what did he say in the ayah after that like the believers are brothers so the two parties they killed one another Allah referred to them as fighting one another bloodshed is taking place but then after that what did he say to them even though you might be killing one another your brothers don't forget that صح? صح? Uh, so this shows us that Killing a Muslim doesn't make you a kafir. Okay, it doesn't make you a kafir. Even though the messenger said, لا ترجع بعد كفارا يضرب بعضكم رقاب بعض. Also the other hadith, سباب المسلم فسوق وقتاله وقتاله كفر. Insulting a Muslim is fisk. Killing him is kufr. Killing him is kufr here means minor kufr, not major kufr. Are we all together brothers? And this is very very serious because this is what the khawarij used to make the person who does major sin to be kafir kufr akbar so, killing one another is a major sin but it's not kufr so, are we all together the khawarij they took these verses and these texts and they said killing one another is kufr akbar but they didn't bring the text together and the evidence is together. Are you with me, brothers? Because we know in the Quran there are ayat which are and evidences which are ambiguous. They're not clear, and there are clear cut verses and clear cut texts. There are the verse which are clear, and there's are verses which are not clear. Ahlu Sunnah they say. Killing a Muslim is kufr amali and not kufr i'tiqadi. Again, the kufr is two types. Kufr i'tiqadi, which means that major kufr, and kufr amali, which means minor kufr. This action is the action of the disbelievers. Killing and spilling blood, that's not the action of a Muslim. Muslim doesn't spill blood. That's what it means. But does it mean that the person is a kafir and a disbeliever for doing that. Naam. The author, Rahimahullah, he talks about Jannah and Nar. Are they created? Yes. Jannah is already created. They are both created and they are both going to remain forever. The people are going to be in there. How do we know that it's created? And Imam Ahmad gave you evidence for it. That the Prophet said, Dakhaltu Jannah. The Prophet said, I entered Jannah. Fara'aytu Qasr and I saw a palace. وَرَأَيْتُ الْكَوْثَرَ I saw the kawthar. In another hadith, the Prophet said, وَطَّلَعْتُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ I entered Jannah and I saw the majority of its inhabitants were... All of this is what? That it was created and it's created. Imam Muhammad said, فَمَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّهُمَا لَمْ تُخْلَقَا Anyone who says Jannah and Nar hasn't been created yet. 
فهو مكذب he is a disbeliever of بالقرآن he disbelieves in the Quran why does he disbelieve in the Quran what's the evidence of the Quran how does he believe disbelieve in the Quran because the Sheikh didn't even mention the Quran what is he referring to in the Quran anyone who can give us evidence from the Quran don't shout it out just put your hand up that the Jannah is made on the Nar just put your hand up here how does that show that it's created? I want it to show that it is created now. Yeah, are you? No, that it's created now. Are you? There's a discussion regarding that whether it's Jannatul Khulji or it's another Jannah that Adam went to. I want Ayat Sariha. Where is it? They'll just show that they're going to get Jannah. But how, where's the evidence that Jannah is now present? Huh? The evidence is U'iddat lil muttaqeen. U'iddat, it has been prepared. The word U'iddat lil muttaqeen, Jannah has been prepared, past tense. Are we all together? That's the evidence to show that Jannah has been created already. Surah Ali Imran. In the disbelievers, Allah says, Jahannam, Allah spoke about it. He said, U'iddat lil kafirin. Prepared for the, hell, the people of the hellfire. Are we all together, brothers? You have to know the evidences for your issues. Naam. Wa you? ولا ولا يحجب ولا يحجب عنه الاستغفار ولا تترك ولا تترك الصلاة عليه لذنب أذنبه صغيرا كان أو كبيرا أنكو إلى الله تعالى آخر الرسالة والحمد لله وحده وصلواته على محمد وآله وسلم تسليما. The Sheikh رحمه الله concluded by saying ومن مات من أهل القبلة anyone who dies as a Muslim Ahlul Qibla is referred to the innovator, the, Mus, the person of the Sunnah, all of them. It's referred to as Ahlul Qibla. The people who t- face the Qibla, the innovators in there. As long as he dies as a what? Wahidan, upon Tawheed. Yusalla Ali, we pray on, or we pray on him. Wa yustaghfaru lahu, we ask Allah's forgiveness for him. Wa la yuhajabu anhu istighfar. And you can't withhold asking forgiveness for him. Can't. Wa la tutraku salatu alayhi. And you can't leave of praying Salatul Janazah on him. Lidam bin Adnabahu. Sin that he has done. Sagheer and kana o kabira. Whether that sin is large or whether it's little. Amurhu ilallah ta'ala. The matter is to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Lakin, sometimes a person of position who has a position in the community, he can say, I'm not going to pray on this particular person so he can show the people the severity of the issue. But that is not allowed for every single person to withhold praying from him, on him. Are we all together? Like when the messenger refused to pray on the man who had debt on him. Remember, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, is there debt on this, does this man have any debt? They said, Ya Rasulullah, yes. The Prophet said, I'm not going to pray on him. I'm not going to pray on him. You guys pray. So everyone can't leave it. But it makes it very serious that the Prophet refused to pray on him. So then a Sahabi, he said, Ya Rasul, I'm going to pay. The Prophet said, are you going to pay? He said, Ya Rasul, I will pray. Please pray on him. The Prophet said, okay. And he prayed. And then he said, Abu Qatada, he said, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept asking me about that debt, whether I paid it off. He kept asking me and asking me, asking me, asking me, asking me, until when I told him I paid, he said, now his body has found warmth. It's relaxed now his body. When you pay that debt on him. So this is something that a, a, a person of position in the community, if he sees a person who, who, who's had done something, he can withhold praying on him. لِمَصْلَحَ رَاجِحَةً Like not everybody can do that. Some people have to pray on him. 
because that's his right. Are we all together? Some people have to pray on him. Well, there's a hadith that Sheikh Albani rahimahullah authenticated that the Prophet has said, Sallu ala man qala la ilaha illallah. Pray on the person who says la ilaha illallah. Okay? So it's fardu kifaya. Ida qama bihi ba'd, sakata alil baqeen. If there's a group of people who do it, the obligation will be uplifted from the rest of the people. But everybody is not allowed to leave it. Everyone is not allowed to leave it. Like in the disbelievers, you don't pray on them. You don't pray janazah on them. Allah said, وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدًا وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ The disbeliever, however much you like him, don't pray on him. However much he's your family member, you can't pray on him. And this ayah came down on who? Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salal. Abdullah ibn Ubay had a son called Abdullah as well. Okay? And so his son was a companion. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, my father, my father died. And his dad is the leader of the Munafiqeen. Do you all know that till today, well, if it still happened, but do you guys know that Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salal, he is shrouded on the Prophet's upper garment? Do you guys know that? The leader of the Munafiqeen was shrouded with the Prophet's upper garment. He took it off and he gave it to his son. And the son took it and he shrouded it with his father. The head of the Munafiqeen, Abdullah ibn Ubay. And the Prophet even stood up to go and lead the Salah for Abdullah ibn Ubay. To make his son feel happy. And then Allah said, وَلَا تُصَلِّ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ مِنْهُمْ مَا تَأَبَدًا Muhammad, don't pray on any one of them who are disbelievers. وَلَا تَقُمْ عَلَىٰ قَبْرِ Don't even stand on top of his grave. That's what Allah said to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the ending of the Risala. وَهَذَا آخِرُ شَرْحِ الَّذِي That's the last sharah which I gave irtijalan. Who knows what irtijalan means? Put your hand up if you know what irtijalan means. Put your hand up. Huh? Huh? Yeah, in a hurry, not given detailed explanation, and a lot of it from memory. I want to say, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow, we're going to be starting the kitab, the manzuma of Abu Ishaq al-Ilbiri, manzuma to ta'iyya. It talks about the reality of the dunya. And that book has good advices, very, very good advices that all of you guys can benefit from. Try to come, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to do that one for one, one day, just one day. All of it will finish it in what? One day, inshallah ta'ala. Make sure you come. Anything I might have said in the explanation of this book, any mistakes, shortcomings, errors or mistakes, is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka atubu ilayk. Anyone have any questions? Did, did, I, did I say anyone have any question? Is that what I said? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, let's start from the back. So the brother is asking, what's the issue of the companion who had debt on his neck and he died? You want more details regarding that story? No. To be honest, I've never found any extra narrations that expanded on what his reason was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's all I've come across in the narrations. All my life, I've never seen any ziyadah, any additional things that was added to the narration regarding the man who the Prophet وسلم, he asked just, does this man have any debt? They said, yes, sir. He said, I'm not praying on him. Which, to be honest, shows us the severity and the, how heavy it is when it comes to debt. Naam, akhi.
the issue of killing a Muslim, the brother asked, is it deliberately or is it by mistake? If a person kills a Muslim by accident, then there's blood money which he has to pay because the blood of the Muslim is not without any value. It's got value. So there's blood money that you have to give, but there is no sin on you. You just have to give blood money to that family. The scholars, they mention, if you hit a person and they lose their mind, hatta even then you have to give a full blood money. Because the aql, it has a big place in our religion. Like if you kill a Muslim deliberately, Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he said, I looked at the Quran and I never found a verse that has anything more serious than killing. Because Allah says, وَمَنْ قَتَلَ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَأُوا جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَلَعَنَهُ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا صح? Severe punishment. Allah is angry with you. You'll stay in the hellfire forever. You'll be punished severely. Serious. If Walidarika the Prophet looked at the Kaaba one day and he said to the Kaaba, Ma a'adamak wa ma ashrafak. The Kaaba, what is greater than you? What is more honorable than you? And then the Prophet said, Illa damru Muslim, except the blood of the Muslim. Some people today, they may not have spilt blood. They may not have spilt blood. They may physically not have spilled blood, but they endorsed something that could have caused a blood to go. And that's going to be on your scale the day of judgment. You have to be careful of your words, what you support, what you endorse, what you push. Stay away from dima. And Imam Ahmed, and Imam Ahmed, this great Imam, at his time, when the leaders were saying the Quran is created, and Al Imam Ahmad said that the Quran, anyone who says it's created is a disbeliever. They said, Al Imam Ahmad, should we go against these leaders? He said, No. And then they said, We're going to go against them. And Al Imam Ahmad said, Ad Dima, Ad Dima. Blood, blood. Look how he reminded them. What did he say to them? He said, The blood, the blood. So we have to realize the value of the blood of the Muslim and not see it to be insignificant, ma'am. Fadal. You mentioned uh, about uh, the things that you're listening to when you're driving. Uh, the generation of Sheikh Sidi Ahmed and Fadi, the companions, he didn't even take the Shahada. He went out, got to the Mecca, and went back to the Mecca. You see, this, this is a very, very good question. A person who believed in Allah, who didn't do shirk, who never testified, he didn't say, Ashadu Allah, ilayhi Allah, Ashadu Allah, Muhammad Rasulullah, what do we do in this situation? We have to distinguish one from the other. For us, he's not a Muslim because he hasn't come with the condition of what, is, what makes a person a Muslim. Are we all together, brothers? But there could be a possibility that he's a Muslim. That's between him and Allah. But to us, we don't bury him with the Muslims. Are we all together? We don't pay janazah on him. We have to break two things from one another. The issue of the dunya ruling and the issue of the akhirah. Are we all together? For example, a person who's in the Amazon forest who's never seen Islam, no message has reached him. And Allah said in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى إِشْ وَمَا كُنَّا مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ No message has come to them. In the middle of the Amazon forest. He's, he's in the middle of the jungle. He's playing around with monkeys. You see? He doesn't know anything else. If he sees an aeroplane, he's shocked. He's like, what's this bird flying over us? He doesn't know anything. Okay? This man, is he excused? نعم. He's excused in the akhirah. In the dunya, like, what do we do? If he dies, we don't bury him with the Muslims. Are we all together, brothers? So that's the two you have to distinguish one from another. Fadl Abu Saleh.
Yes, that's what Imam Ahmad believes, yes. Naam. Naam, okay. That's your choice. Whether you want to love someone or not, that's your choice. You can... No, you don't have to love them if you... Yes, or no, you don't have to. You can love who you want, you can like who you want. Ha, ah, that's important. The person you can love who you wish, you can hate who you want in the dunya today, but there are protocols you need to follow, which is listen and obey what you do. Are we all together? Now. Ah. Mm -hmm. Who? No, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud didn't explain the two situations. He explained the concept that was put to him. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was asked about لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده شر أشر منه He said لا يعني ذلك أن عاما أفضل من عام Are you with me? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud didn't say Hajjaj or Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the concept of it meaning one leader is better than the other. That concept, Ibn Mas'ud responded to it before that. Are you with me? No. Jazakallah for letting me point out. Ah. Uh, who? Who did it? Rejecting who? Yeah, they don't believe no virtue for Abu Bakr or Umar, no. They don't believe no virtue for them. Shaykh, my question is, uh, there are some people who like, uh, they put this doubt forward that they say that, they, for example, someone you know to be a disbeliever, someone you know to be a kafir, like for example, let's take an example of uh, Stephen Hawking. Mm -hmm. uh, when he died, like some people, some people like, don't say him like he died as a disbeliever or he's in the hellfire because he might have accepted mm -hmm. Islam. So what you would say about the, these people who say, don't say that he's a disbeliever or don't say he's in the hellfire because he might have accepted Islam mm. while he was at the end of his mm. life. Mm. So what do you say? If a person dies and we know he's a disbeliever, do we say that he's in the hellfire because he's a disbeliever? Or mm. we <coughs> what I want to say, brothers, is that let's avoid names, okay? It's very important that we avoid names, okay, in this gathering. No names mentioned. Don't say no one's name. Just say the concept, inshallah ta'ala. Let me go back to the concept generally. And I think it's important because the concept is more important to us than names, okay? Some people don't know who you're talking about, so they might go look into it. It's best to avoid names and not mention names. Anyone who dies as disbelief, for us, we consider that to be person to be a disbeliever. If he doesn't say, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Ashadu la Muhammad Rasulullah, he's not a Muslim, okay? If he doesn't say that to us, we never consider him to be a believer. And any person who's not a believer, what do we say? He's in the hellfire. Based on what ayah? That ayah, Inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrak bi wa yaghfiru ma juna dharika lam yasha. Yaw inna la inna inna ma yushrik bi Allah faqad haram Allah ala jannah wa ma'wahu an-nar ma lil-zalimina min ansar. Fayd person I was going to take the question from was you? Naam. Fadl. Just ask one question, inshallah. No, it's not strong. Depends on who's the person. And who is, the only one that has a consensus is our mother Aisha. Anyone who accuses her of a zina after Allah Azza wa Jalla freed her, then he is disbelieving in what? The Quran that was sent down. I'm just going to conclude with one, one powerful point. Aisha Radhi Qawamu Sunnah Abu Qasim at Taymi, he brought in his Kitab Al Hujja Fi Bayani Al Mahajja, that Aisha Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anha, uh, a group of people came to her and they told her, Ya Umm al Mu'mineen, Umm al Mu'mineen, Naam, Aisha, there are a people who consider you not to be from the mother's, mother of the believers. They don't say that you're a mother of the believers. They say, no, 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 they say you're not a mother for us. You're not our mother. They are out there running around saying that you're not our mother. 
And Aisha said, correct, I am not their mother, I am the mother of the, the believers. So they're right, I am not their mothers. I am the mother of who? Umm al that's the title Allah gave. And Nabi Awla bil Mu'minina min anfusim eh? Wa azwajuhu ummahatum. That the Prophet has every right over the believers, over themselves, and their wa- his wives are what? The mother of the? The believers. Well, one of the powerful statements that Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz said was that, what's the ruling of the person who slanders a woman with zina that she's free of? Islamically, she get, the person should get what? Flogged. They get lashed, right? Allah made the rafi that lash themselves. For what they've said about who? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. They do it to themselves. No one needs to do it to them. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu la ilaha illallah, astaghfiru wa atubu